asked Bobby Addy to sing. But I found out this afternoon that he can sing. And he and Brother Gary were back there working on a song, and I thought that's what they were going to do tonight, was going to play that song. And Brother Bobby, I guess you're just practicing, right, for another day? Okay, all right. Well, I want to tell you, I am so thankful for this service that we're having tonight. Amen? Amen. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over sinners that have repented of their sin and have come to know Jesus as their personal Savior, the one who saves them from death and hell and the consequences of their sin, and Lord, the one who is willing to guide their life so that they might be strong in the kingdom of God. God saves each one of us for a purpose. He gives each one of us a will that we are supposed to do and accomplish for the kingdom of God. And we do that not in our own will, but in the power and the might of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have baptism here in just a few moments. And I'd like to share with you a passage of Scripture and then talk just a minute about what this passage of Scripture means. Would you stand together with me? If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, you are welcome to do that, but you probably know what it is already. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. This is what Jesus, these are the last words that Matthew records that Jesus told his disciples to do. Last words are very important, aren't they? Uh, when our families speak their last words before they pass on, we want, or before they leave to go somewhere else for a long time, we want to be sure to get their last words. And we want to make sure that those last words of their wishes are carried out. So these are the last words that Matthew records of Jesus. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. You may be seated. It is wonderful to know the Scripture and to know what baptism really does mean. The word baptizo that is used here when Jesus is using this word baptizing means to plunge under. In other words, it means not to sprinkle, but to plunge underneath the water. Because all of this plunging has significance and in symbolism of what has happened in our life. And not only what has happened in our life, but has happened in the life of Jesus. For when we look at this passage and it talks about baptizing, we want, to, we want to know what that baptism means. And it means at least three things. It means more than that, but it literally means three different things. It symbolizes three different things. You'll remember with me that when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says they took his body and they buried his body. And for three days, he was in the tomb. And on the third day, Jesus was raised from the dead. Whenever we go through the waters of baptism, we pronounce or we declare or we testify the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. There's no more beautiful picture that we have of what Jesus has done for us than the waters of baptism. For certainly the candidate stands there in the waters, and then we take them down underneath the waters, bury them in baptism, and then raise them up. A picture exactly of what happened in the life of Jesus when he died on the cross, and then when he was raised from the dead on the third day to live forever. Now then, we also know that the baptism symbolizes something else for us, and that is that when the, when the person realizes that they are lost and outside of God's care and they realize that the wages of sin is death and that the wages of sin is death and that 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And when we realize that God is not in our life, but we are separated Him because of our sin, then we ask Jesus to come into our life, forgive our sin, create in us a new spirit whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and then He fills us with His precious, sweet Holy Spirit. There is a beautiful picture in baptism exactly of what takes place in our life. Amen? Because when I stand there as a candidate for baptism, I stand there representing those who are lost and outside the gospel of Jesus Christ. I stand there representative of the fact that if I'm lost in my sin, that I am not going to be condemned, but I am condemned already outside the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you're not going to be condemned, you're already condemned. And so there is that person who stands there representative of their sin. And then we take that person underneath the water. We bury them in baptism. What does that mean? That means that we die to ourself to be alive to Jesus. You see, here's the truth of what being saved means. It's not just knowing the intellectual fact of who Jesus is, but it is committing our life to who He is and what He wants for us. It's submitting our will to His will and being obedient to Him. You remember what Jesus did in the garden when He was praying and the Bible tells us that He was seeing in His eye, in His spirit, all that was about to happen to Him, how that they were going to beat Him, how they were going to mock Him, how that He was going to be left alone, that all the disciples were going to leave Him, and then He was going to have all this physical torment as well as the demons of hell inflicting their torment through these human beings, that these human beings were instruments of the demons as they inflicted torment and pain. Now I want to tell you something. Satan's smart. You know it? Satan's not dumb. And I, I don't believe that Satan's dumb enough that he was trying to get Jesus to die on the cross. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because I believe if he, he knew that if Jesus died on the cross, that was it for him. And so he was doing everything he could do. Remember back there in the wilderness? When, he, when Jesus went out in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, what did Satan do? He came to tempt him three different times. Why was he tempting him? He was tempting him in order for, to get him not to go the path that God wanted him to go, and that was sacrifice, sacrificing his life. And even when he was there in the Garden of Gethsemane, again, the old flesh was saying, God, Father, please deliver me from the torment that is before me. But yet then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. And whenever a person prays that prayer, not my will, but thy will be done, that's whenever God moves in our life in such a mighty power. It's not what I can do for God, it's what God does in me. For you see, I stand there as a representative of a sinner, but I die, I'm buried with him in baptism. I die to what I want to be alive to what God wants in me. Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful to know that God loves me and he wants to use me in the kingdom to bring about the glory of God. Can I say to you, if I had it to do all over again, there would be some things I would do different. I'd still go to Clark College. I'd still marry the same woman. I'd still have the same kids. I'd still have the same grandkids. And I would still surrender to the gospel call of the preaching ministry that God had for me. Because I've made some of the best friends I, I, I could stand here today telling you that the word of God is right. That God will restore a hundredfold to you if you leave father and mother and brother and sister and grandmother and grandfather in order to do his will. We've got grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, had we gone, all over the state of Mississippi because God honors his word when we did what God said. And I want to say to you, that when I died to myself to be alive to God, I had no idea what God was going to do. Can I tell you, when I, was a, when I finished Clark College, I went and applied to this, uh, this company. Uh, and 
and they ask this question, would you be willing to leave Jackson, Mississippi to go somewhere else for advancement? You know what I said? Absolutely not. I like Jackson. I like Pearl, Mississippi. I like being a Pearl Pirate. I would love to be a Pearl Pirate for the rest of my life. I wore the gold and blue. And it was wonderful. And I said, I'd never leave. But when God called, I didn't have a choice. It wasn't what I wanted anymore. It was what God wanted for me. How many of you made that choice? Amen? That you have decided to follow him. And that's what that means. Baptism is symbolic of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Baptism is symbolic of my dying to what I want to be alive to what God wants in my life. And it is the most exciting life that a person can ever, ever live. Because seeing God move in your life, speaking to your heart, answering prayer, influencing people, bringing blessing after blessing into your life and allowing you to follow after him is the most wonderful life in all the world. For some out there in the world, this life looks so dull and boring. But when you get on the inside of the Christ-like life and allow God to move in your heart and in your life, He is beautiful. Thank you. Now then, there's a third thing. There is a third thing that baptism symbolizes for us. Not only the fact that Jesus is buried, died, and buried, and raised again. Not only the fact that when I accept him as my personal Savior and Lord, I'm forgiven of my sin. God creates a new spirit in my life. He fills me with the Holy Spirit. Baptism symbolizes that. But I want you to know baptism also symbolizes the fact that when I'm taken down into the watery grave and I am lifted up, the Bible tells me that there's going to come a day when Jesus is going to sound the trumpet. When the trumpet's going to sound, the angel's going to shout, and all of those in the grave who have died in the Lord, of course their spirit has gone on to be with Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So what that means is that when I taste death, when death comes into my life, if I close my eyes for the last time, I take my last breath, my spirit goes to be with Jesus. But then the, my flesh, this tabernacle that I have lived in, is buried in the ground or whatever it's done to it. When Jesus comes and that trumpet sounds and that angel shouts, then the Bible says that wherever that body is, it's going to be raised up incorruptible. It's not going to be like the body I have now that grows old and is subject to all kinds of problems, but it's going to be a glorified body just like Jesus' body. And so that whenever I'm raised up, I will have, I'll be, that body will be raised up and in my body, that body will be reunited with the spirits that Jesus brings with him and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's what happens to those who have died in the Lord, Thessalonians tells us. And then the Bible tells us that if we are alive whenever Jesus comes back, then it's going to happen just like that. We're going to be changed. The old flesh is going to fall off and the new body is going to be given to us that's just like Jesus's. And then the Bible says we will rise to be with him. Now can you imagine a pilot loving Jesus? Can you imagine a truck driver loving Jesus? Can you imagine a doctor doing serious surgery loving Jesus? Can you imagine that they're doing all these things that they are called to do and all of a sudden the trumpet sounds and the angel shouts and just like that, the doctor's gone, the truck driver who's been driving that truck, what's going to happen to that truck? I have no idea. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I don't know what's going to happen to that plane. It's not going to crash into my house. It's not going to crash into me because you know what? I'm going up too. Amen? 
So when we have baptismal service, it is a glorious time because baptism is symbolic of what Jesus Christ did in his death, burial, in his resurrection. It symbolizes what I have done. I have died to myself so that I can be alive to Christ. And it shows to me that one day Jesus is going to come back in his great glory and power in the rapture of the church and he's going to take those who have loved him with him, whether they are dead or alive. I want to tell you, Jesus has got a posted, a wanted poster. It's not in the post office. It's in the Word of God. And it says, wanted, dead or alive. <laughs> Amen? So whether you, when you are a believer, you are wanted, dead or alive. When the trumpet sounds and the angel shouts, it's going to happen to all of us who love him and love his appearing. Well, as we look at the time signs of the times today, we have to say that it can't be long. Amen? It just looks like to me that what is happening with Israel... Oh, I just get so excited when I talk about this. Can you tell? I, I just love the fact of what is happening in Israel today. The Bible tells us that when Israel blooms again, that when Israel blooms again, it's not going to be long before the Lord Jesus comes back. He tells us that he is, when all these things begin to happen, when they begin to bloom and prosper and all these things begin to happen in the nation of Israel, they came back in 1948, they gained Jerusalem in 1967, and they are prospering today over there. And we have, been the, we have been the recipients of a lot of the blessings that they have brought into society because of their discoveries that they have made. And God has honored them. God has blessed them. And guess what? They are one example of what's going to take, what has to take place in order for Jesus to come back. And it's already happened. Amen? The Bible says that in the, in the, in the tribulation that the Euphrates River is going to dry up. And millions and millions of soldiers are going to march across that dry riverbed. You know what they've done at the Euphrates River? They put a dam on the Euphrates River. And you know what they can do? They can stop that water at any point in time. And the army can march across. Would you hear me? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The witness is that he died, and he was buried, and he rose again. The witness is for all the believers who love him and love his appearing. And the witness is that he is coming again, and it could be very, very soon. Are you ready for his appearing? Have you experienced the new birth in Jesus? Have your sins been forgiven? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? If not, then tonight could be your night that you accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that we're all sinners. We're all separated from God. And when I realize that I've sinned and I ask Jesus to forgive me by the power of the cross and the blood of the cross, he covers my life with his blood and all of my sins are forgiven by God. He does not hold me accountable for one of them. And then, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he creates in me a new spirit whereby I become a child of God. And as a child of God, I receive the Holy Spirit and I talk to God. And guess what? God talks with me. And there is no better, there is no better experience than the created having fellowship with a creator. He is God, and he chooses to have fellowship with me. And I want to tell you, he chooses to have fellowship with you too. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, he wants to have fellowship with you. He wants you to, he wants you to be with him not only now, but for all eternity. You know how I know? Because he went to the cross. He suffered all that shame and pain and torment of his life and body and he did it so we could be free to know him and to be with him so do you know him tonight if not you can know him you can be saved tonight 
by placing your faith and trust in the word of God and be transformed from darkness into light from going from death unto life God is good let's pray together Father I just want to thank you so much for this congregation I want to thank you for this church and the witness it bears to the community that Jesus Christ is alive and that you are here through the power of your Holy Spirit and God if there's one here who does not know you as personal Savior and if they were to walk out that door tonight and they were to be killed in an accident or they were to have a heart attack and fall dead God they would be separated from you not only now but for all eternity and tonight is an opportunity for them to come to know you as personal Savior hear our prayer O Lord move among us we pray in Jesus name Amen would you stand with me